Just a side note, guys, before we get started, if the comments are turned off, I didn't do it. It's because there's a child's face shown in the video. So please feel free to go to my community tab. There should be a window there or a page there for you to make comments on this video or any others that the comments are turned off on. Thank you. Well, hello, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a child that we haven't reported on in a while. And because there really is not much new to go on other I mean other than the bad luck of the parents and I wouldn't even call it bad luck because they're not really parents and so we don't really mind what happens to them other than what's going on with the monsters these days there's not a whole lot to report on Oakley but she is one of the the angels that are the babies that has really touched my heart alongside Summer Wells and I do like to go back every once in a while and try to bring her story, her face, um, the information out so that we do not forget about Oakley and so that people are still on lookout for her because she is still out there. No body, no remains, nothing has been found so we can only assume and pray and hope that she is still alive. So please guys, make sure and keep her picture and her name and her face out there and don't let this case go cold either please so let me read this article to you and yes i do read articles that other people have written because i find them very intriguing and interesting and informative and i feel like you all may not have the time to go read these articles for yourself or you may not run across them so therefore, I find them and I read them for you. And that, that's just the way it is sometimes with my channel. So I hope you understand. I hope you, you know, enjoy this or as much as you can enjoy hearing about a missing child. But let's just get on with it, guys. Okay, the headliner says, Andrew, or Andrew and Jordan claim to have last seen Oakley on November 30th, 2021. Neither of them reported her missing. The pair were arrested shortly after the welfare check and were later convicted of child endangerment regarding their six-year-old child, Oakley's sister. Two years later, where's Oakley Carlson and what's being done to prevent similar situations? This was written by Brittany Perry, published November, or February the 10th of this year, guys. Supporters rally in Olympia for Oakley Carlson Act. The Oakley Carlson Act outlines a number of changes intended to protect children who have been removed from a parent based on abuse, neglect, or abandonment. A group rallied on the two-year anniversary of when five-year-old Oakley was last seen. Oakville, Washington, February the 10th, marks two years since Gray Harbor County Sheriff's detectives say was the last credible sighting of Oakley Carlson, a five-year-old missing from out of Oakville. Oakley was living with her foster parents for almost three years before the courts decided in 2019 that she be returned to her biological parents, Andrew Carlson and Jordan Bowers. Both Carlson and Bowers have remained uncooperative with law enforcement regarding Oakley's whereabouts. Authorities say the circumstances of Oakley's disappearance are suspicious. This is the timeline. It says timeline of events. October to December 2020, Oakley's grandparents and her elementary school principal last reported seeing her. February the 10th, 2021, investigators say this was the last credible sighting of Oakley seen alive. November 2021, court documents. Fire breaks out at Carlson home. 
parents Andrew and Jordan Bowers claim Oakley had a lighter on the couch and started the fire. However, investigators determined that the fire likely started in a microwave on the counter not on the couch. Investigators also say they found clothing and toys belonging to two other children in the house, but not Oakley. Oakley was not at the home when investigators looked around. Andrew and Jordan and the other two children lived in an extended stay in America after the fire. November the 10th to the 24th, 2021. Court documents. The principal of Oakville Elementary had been in contact almost daily with the family since the fire, dropping off supplies and helping them out. She said she had not seen Oakley at any point during the multiple visits. December the 5th, 2021, court documents. Oakley's six-year-old sister has a sleepover play date at the principal's home. Child said there's no Oakley when asked about her sister's whereabouts and well-being. December the 6th, 2021, court documents. Elementary principal requests a welfare check from law enforcement. Officers responded to the extended stay America where the Carlsons and the Bowers are staying. Both parents said Oakley was at Andrew's father's home, though he could not provide an address or phone number despite growing up in that home and living there for 20 years. Grandparents said Oakley was not staying with them when officers checked. Oakley is officially reported missing. All right, May 2022, Governor J. Inslee called for a review of the Department of Children, Youth, and Families, DCYF, handling of Oakley's case. Community members and advocates have raised questions on whether there were missteps or shortfalls in Oakley's placement and care and whether the system tasked with keeping her safe failed. Advocates also demand to know why DCYF didn't check on Oakley after she was returned to her parents. The investigation conducted by Office of the Family and Children's Ombuds, OFCO, found that the department's actions and conduct in this case were consistent with laws, policies, and court orders. The OFCO did say that the investigation identified areas of improvement specifically to preserve and strengthen the parent-child bond when a child is removed from the home. Andrew Carlson and Jordan Bowers. Andrew and Jordan claim to have last seen Oakley on November 30th, 2021. Neither of them reported her missing. The pair were arrested shortly after the welfare check and were later convicted of child endangerment regarding their six-year-old child, Oakley's sister. Deputies learned during their investigation that Bowers and Carlson had not been providing medication to the six-year-old as required by her doctor for over a year. Andrew was convicted in March 2022 and released in August of that year to a drug treatment program. Jordan was sentenced to a year and a half in prison in April 2022, but she was released in January 2023. She was immediately arrested upon her release for fraud charges. Court documents allege that Bowers was a small-scale fraudster offering to help set up people's accounts for a Dave credit card, then routing the money to cards she took out in the other people's name. Bowers' scheme was uncovered soon after she checked out of the extended stay America and was arrested. Andrew and Jordan remain uncooperative in the investigation in Oakley's disappearance, according to the deputy. What's next? The reward for information on Oakley's disappearance is now at $85,000. Her foster mom, Jamie Jo Hiles, has been leading the charge to find Oakley and make changes in Olympia regarding system failures that allowed Oakley to be missing for nearly a year without raising any alarms. In January 2023, House Bill 1397, also known as the Oakley Carlson Act, was written by Representative Jim Walsh of the 19th District. The Oakley Carlson Act outlines a number of changes intended to protect children who have been removed from a parent based on abuse, neglect, or abandonment. The Oakley Carlson Act will not only prevent this kind of thing from happening again, but if this kind of thing does happen again, it'll put us in a better position to find the missing child, said Walsh. Unfortunately, there were several times when Oakley wasn't with us. I would try to warn DCYF that something wasn't right, something was amiss, and unfortunately, I just wasn't heard, Hiles said. 
at a rally for the HB 1397. The bill is scheduled for public comment before the House Committee of Human Services on February the 17th, 2023. Supporters, this is Jennifer uh, Dowling's Twitter account, says supporters say HB 1397 would safeguard kids when they get reunited with their birth families in cases where the birth parents originally lost custody based on abuse, neglect, or abandonment. Guys, we have got to keep that baby's picture, her name, and her story out there, and we have got to support this bill. We do not want any children. I mean, we don't want children taken from good parents when they don't need to be, but when children are taken from parents for re really good reasons, we need some kind of safeguards where if the children are turn to the parents that somebody continually goes back in and checks on these children to make sure that they are in a stable good home they were removed in the first place for a reason they need to keep that in mind cps or dcyf whatever you want to call it in whatever state you're in could do with a major major overhauling I mean, that's just the way it is. Whether it be not taking kids from, you know, good families or returning them back to horrible families after they've already been taken. Something has got to be done. That's my story for today, and I'll see you guys on the next video.